Okay, from this module onwards, we look at uh, dynamics of bodies, especially rigid bodies. <coughs> In the earlier set of modules, there are some deliberate mistakes that I have made. I want you to identify those mistakes. Okay. In the following series of modules also, there may be some deliberate mistakes just to capture your attention. Okay. I am sure you, you all will be alert in trying to find that particular set of mistakes. Okay. With this, let us just start understanding dynamics. <coughs> so, I have with me Mr. Venkat Rao. I am going to just ask a few questions and start the dialogue. We will try to understand from that what it means to say dynamics of a rigid body, dynamics of a body from our understanding of dynamics of a particle. Let us say some P, you have a rigid body. Okay, so, let us call this as some beta which is a rigid body. All right. Now, the question is how do you distinguish from dynamics point of view the dynamics of a particle from dynamics of a rigid body? Okay. Uh, so, the dynamics of a, a rigid body, uh, we have the different particles mm -hmm. in the rigid body and uh, all the particles will have I mean uh, the same motion when the rigid body moves in a particular direction. Okay. Okay, that is okay. one idea. Of course, both things will have velocity and acceleration. Right. Both will have velocity, yeah, velocity acceleration. acceleration. What is the moment of inertia of a particle? Okay, that is what the, the I mean the inertia, moment of inertia is not. Uh, or in other there, words, we do not deal with. Moment of inertia of the particle, but or, moment of inertia will be considered for uh, right. a rigid now, body. Or in other words, there is something that we do not consider for a particle you know, when you write down dynamics, oh. equations of dynamics. Yes. What is that? We do consider the motion of uh, the particle. Yes. What is it that we do not consider when it when it comes to a particle? Have you heard of rotation of a particle? Yeah. Rotation of a body we have. Particle? Particle no. Right. Usually when we consider this, yeah. we do not look at rotation of the particle or the angular velocity of the particle, angular acceleration of the particle. Right. Yeah. Those right? will not be considered. But the moment we look at rigid bodies, we are looking at angular acceleration, angular velocity and so on. What is the characteristic of the rigid body that is missing in the particle that we consider this? Okay. So, let me explain that particular aspect. Thanks. Now, one of the important uh, things to understand is when I am looking at a particle, it is a single point dynamics that we are looking at okay. and usually we look at only the linear accelerations velocities and so on of the particle. Okay. The dimension of this is 0 the dimension. The moment we have a higher dimension, for example, if we have a length attached to the rigid body, immediately apart from the moment of this length, we also are looking at the rotation of this length, okay, how it deforms. So, we are going to look at a, a, a general body which is deformable and then bring it down to this particular aspect, okay, shall we? Okay. So, let us think of a body, think of a gel, okay. it is easy to understand that the gel goes through a deformation. right? <clears throat> so, let us say there is a gel and you apply some certain forces and it deforms okay and you move it move it around this will deform as well as move when it moves it will move in a linear way or in a in a translatory way also may rotate okay apart from deforming okay it is very difficult to look at the complete deformation from the point of your single point this is assumed to be a continuum of several particles together that is an ensemble of several particles and we will look at the relative motion between the particles or the points denoting the particles in order to understand the deformation that this goes through. 
all right let's now look at a small volume of this particular body okay so if i take a small volume of this particular body okay i'm just taking an idealistic picture of let's say a cuboid and if i observe what is happening to this particular cuboid then i'll understand what is happening to the entire body because this is the entire body is an ensemble of these small uh, bits and pieces so far is fine now the moment i look at this what could happen to this particular uh, uh, cuboid it could probably deform it could rotate it could translate okay so i i can say that there is a translation that is possible if i draw it as it is like this it's a pure translation that we, that i'm looking at or it could probably rotate like this in addition to this there will be some deformation that it could take place now looking at this as an infinitesimal body okay which which basically states that the dimensions are very small i can retain the linearity of these sides and just show that there may be an expansion as well as shearing that could happen to this this body okay so i can look at the motion of this single volume of the body to be a translatory motion accompanied by a rotatory motion accompanied by a deformation and i can look at each one of these as one transformation to another transformation to another transformation okay and if i am putting all these together in a body i will find out what will be the transformation that this body has gone through this body in effect would have gone through a translation of the ensemble rotation of the ensemble and deformation of the ensemble okay if this is clear the first attempt that i can make is let me look at this as a body that is not going through deformation okay i can insert this at a later stage so i am now simplifying the problem what i am saying is okay let's look at the rotatory and translatory motion of this body okay if i say it is not deformable what do i mean if i take any two points of this particular rigid body the distance between these two points remain the same okay because deformation involves stretching or relative rotation okay so if i have two lines like this there is an angle between them this angle could change upon deformation or the length could change upon deformation i am going to now just discount those two things from happening okay if i do that what i make sure is the distance between any two points remains the same okay so it is very clear from here if i draw a line over here this line, uh, distance is the same this distance is the same this distance is the same naturally the angles between them also remain the same okay and that i am going to call as rigid body i look at the rigid body dynamics and i can superimpose the deformation on that okay there are theorems that handle this kind of decomposition of rigid body rotations and motions and deformation okay so that renders ease of looking at the first step towards understanding the motion which is translatory and rotation okay usually in the first course on engineering mechanics we deal with translatory and rotatory motion of these bodies and therefore we call these as rigid body dynamics all right we will look at how this is happening and write down how we can understand the relations between the position velocities and accelerations of the body as it is in motion okay now i'm looking at body rather than a single particle 